episode of NOPC. I'm your host, Richard Dubas, with... Lance Arnold. Yeah, co-host. I really like that entrance music. I feel like a pro wrestler coming down to win a title belt or something. And it's free, so I can't give credit to whoever made it, because I just... I mean, it's free music. Yeah. But, <laughs> so, hey, if it's your song, let us know. And yeah. you know I'm going we'll for the title, because I'm not from Atlanta. I'm from New Orleans. <laughs> <laughs> on this podcast we're going to talk everything new orleans we have trivia we have entertainment news and today we have special beer tasting yeah well then we're going to do that every week we're going to try to highlight a new orleans brewery distillery or even you know other things that are you know new orleans you know give a shout out and you know sort of not really give our opinion we'll see if we like it because this uh, podcast is going to be about all good things in New Orleans, all positive things in New Orleans. We're not going to talk about, we all know there's things wrong in the city, but we're not going to talk about those things. No. It's... Even to the point where I'm not going to say, wow, that beer sucked. I'm not going to do it. I'll just say, I'd rather this beer. If, if there's a jump cut, then you know. Yeah. <laughs> <It's> <laughs> I spit out the beer. <laughs> and, uh, so a little, why don't you talk a little bit about yourself, Lance? Since you've been in New Orleans longer than I have. Yeah, and the reason why we're doing this, we both, yeah, because I'm older. <laughs> we're both born and raised in New Orleans, but I'm much older than uh, Richard is. But I love this city. And that's why I started the Noah Sum, uh, yeah, the Noah Sum blog. And then this is going to go up on there. And you know, hopefully, you know, a whole bunch of other people will get on here that love New Orleans to talk about New Orleans and even start their own podcast with this. But, you know, th- I just love New Orleans. I want to talk about New Orleans. I want to share what I know about New Orleans. I want to learn more about New Orleans. So, and I was born and raised here. You know, I'm, I'm you know, almost 50 years old, but I've you know, been to almost every Mardi Gras in all those 50 years. I can't remember missing one, but my mom said I did miss one. I don't know which one that was. Um, I love the Saints, season ticket holder for years and years. Uh, we're sitting here broadcasting from the Nola Sum uh, Pub. Yeah. yeah sitting from the Nola Sum Pub. And you know, we'll give you a tour on another show, just show you all the Saints stuff that I have in here. It's it's like a museum to the Saints. There's more Saints stuff in here than in the Superdome right now. Yeah, so <laughs> I, I, I do collect. So, but... Uh, So I'm a lifelong Saints fan. I've worked in bars pretty much since I was eight years old uh, when my parents bought a bar and and other things. And I've worked in bars in the French Quarter. I DJed. I managed bars in the French Quarter. Went to school here. I got my master's at UNO in mass communications. Uh, I work in Thibodeau. I actually teach in Thibodeau at Nicholas State University, but I choose to live in New Orleans. I'll take that drive because... I want to live here. I want yeah. to live in New Orleans. <laughs> so, uh, so, uh, and that's where I met Richard over at, at Nichols State University. So, uh, well, and we'll learn more about us as we go through these podcasts. But I have no you. secrets. <laughs> I was born and raised in New Orleans. Went to the best high school, Holy Cross. Uh, I went to Shaw, and I'm, I'm, <laughs> we'll argue about that some other day. Yes, because you know I'm, we're from New Orleans because high school is the only thing that matters where you went. <laughs> it's true. In, in any other city, you say, where'd you go to school? They'll tell you the college they went to or something like that. In New Orleans, it doesn't matter. I have advanced degrees, but if somebody asks me where I went to school, I'm going to say Shaw. And given that I went to Shaw, just by saying that, everybody knows I'm a West Banker. Because <laughs> nobody from the East Bank goes to Shaw. But Holy Cross, I had a lot of friends that went to Holy Cross. Yeah. I live in Algiers, so it's still New Orleans. Uh, you know, I'm, in, I'm in the city limits. But yeah, I had a lot of friends at Holy Cross, Jesuit, Brother Martin, you know, but you know, we, had, we, we identify ourselves through our high schools here in New Orleans. Definitely. And I work part-time with WWOZ, probably the most New Orleans radio station. And I also, too, love local music. I You can ask the bands of Flow Tribe and Breton Sound. They know me by name and sometimes give me gifts on stage. And we'll talk about a lot of local <laughs> bands because I do love local music too and I think we even have different tastes where I'm, I mean I know some of the people in the meters. I know Cowboy Mouth very well. They know my names. You know yes. other, other local bands and Breton Sound. You know so I mean so we'll have some crossover but we'll cover a lot of uh, local bands and I hope to get you know, some friends in here to talk one day. Yeah we already have some people that are excited to come on in so it'll be really exciting. Yeah. And what else about you? What else about me? Uh, I, you know, I've lived in New Orleans. I'm a diehard Saints fan. I remember when Aaron Brooks threw the ball backwards and Jake Delhomme went to the Super Bowl. So, uh, yes, I'm a diehard Saints fan. I've been through the ups and downs. I've 
They've ruined many Sundays, and they've made many Sundays better. So we'll, we will talk about the Saints, especially when the season gets closer, but this will not be a Saints podcast. We'll yeah, just, there's too many of those out yeah, there. Yeah, there's too many of those out there. We're, <laughs> we're just going to celebrate all things New Orleans, and we will welcome your your input. Once we get an email, we'll, we'll put it up on the screen when we edit this because we don't have an email yet. No, we don't. I'll, I'll make one tonight. And if you go to one of the places we visit, hashtag NOPC. There you go. Has New Orleans podcast. So. <laughs> New Orleans podcast. Either NOPC. <laughs> no, no, we'll take an hashtag NOPC. But, NOPC. You know, want people to know what it stands for. But Not along, NOPD. <laughs> but along with that, let's get into what this podcast is. So first off, let's start off. We got trivia. Trivia. Okay, so every episode we're going to give a trivia question and we'll answer the trivia question at the end of the episode. Mm -hmm. So for this first one, because we're going to talk a little bit about the Superdome, we already talked about the Saints some, we will talk about Tulane sometimes also, but... Uh, given the Saints and the Superdome is sort of that marquee thing. I know like when you drive into cities and you see something like the Arch in St. Louis and the Needle in, in Seattle, things like that, it's just, it's just something that you identify the city. And I don't think a New Orleans skyline is complete without the Superdome. It's in every like silhouette of the yeah. city. But the Superdome wasn't always here. The Superdome was built in, what, 1975? Yes. Yeah, 1975, the Superdome was built. But before the, the Saints played in the Superdome, before Tulane played in the Superdome, and then back at their new stadium, uh, we had Tulane Stadium, which sat more than the Superdome. It, it seated more than the Superdome. But That could have been a trivia question right there. Yeah. <laughs> but, but what was the last game, last football game played in the Superdome? I'll give you that at the end. That's the, that's the ringer. <laughs> so, as we said in the intro, we're going to you know, talk about breweries and distilleries and things like that. And we chose uh, Nola Brewing Company as our first brewing company. They make a bunch of different beers, but the story of why he started it is because after Katrina, he came back home and he wanted to grab a Dixie beer. Grabbed a Dixie beer, drank a Dixie beer, looked at the bottle, it said, brewed in Wisconsin. Oh, so man. Dixie was sold, or they, they, I don't know the whole story, but he didn't like that. He's like, where can I get good New Orleans beer brewed in New Orleans? And two years later, he started his brewery, and he started those with uh, Nola Bond and Nola Brown. So what we're going to do is we're going to you know, drink two beers from, from theirs. And what Ooh. I have here today is product placement. They didn't pay us, but in the future, if you like your brewery <laughs> on our show, we'll put, we'll put a sign back here. We'll you know, drink it. So or we, food. I also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We have the 7th uh, Street Wheat Lemon Basil Nola and... The Irish Channel Stout. And before we get into start, you know, getting into you know, this brewery and what else they do, what kind of beers do you like? I'm more of an amber person. I love a nice amber. Um, I IPAs are flip of coin. I can either drink an IPA all day, or I take one sip and I cannot. Yeah, I haven't found an IP that I like. I like all other beers pretty much. I like I love stouts. I'll drink light beers, fruity beers, IPAs. <laughs> I just <laughs> yeah, IPAs are they're hit or miss. They taste yeah. like rubbing alcohol, or they have the just enough yeah. for me to cling on to. <laughs> and, and, and just so you know, in case you ever see me on a bar, I will not drink Miller Lite. There's, you yeah, know, that's, that's here. There. That's just you know. But what we have here, product placement. Come on. Yeah. So what we have here is the Seventh Ward Lemon Basil and the Irish Channel Stout. So you want to try it? Yeah, let's try it up. This, this is why I joined the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Gonna crack it open. All right, let's crack it open. Yeah. Yeah, cheers. Cheers. First episode. Ooh. Wow, this is this is pretty good. I mean, I didn't expect it. It's a lemon basil. I didn't know what the hell to expect from a, from a lemon basil. What does it say here? It says, named in honor of the 7th Street Wharf across the street from the brewery. I like it. You like it? What's it taste yeah. like? What's kind of yeah. the texture? Oh, pour me a shot. I know he doesn't want to drink after me. <laughs> All right, I'll wait until you get yours. But I really like the texture of it. It's kind of got that nice, light 
beer, the foam does foam up just enough. I've been uh, researching my beers, and you want a little bit of foam on the top? A little bit ahead? Yeah, because if you pour too slowly, all like the, I think it's the carbon monoxide, not monoxide, all the carbon stuff leave, thus giving you a more bloated feeling. But stouts are supposed to be poured a certain special way too, right? So. All right, here we go. Switch it up. No PC. I love stouts. Oh yes. Yeah. But no, I mean, that is really good. It is smooth. It's 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 light. The ladies would like this one. Yeah, I definitely would and think. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely would think that was more of um if you are not a huge beer drinker and you like just like a light flavor to it, it's it has an awesome aftertaste too. Uh, some other beers they have is the Blonde Ale, of course, the 7th Street, which we just had. Revivalist, a Pale Ale, and, and I'm sure eventually we'll get to all these. Uh, Hoppy Right Infringement, which is an IIPA, which I don't know what that means. That, that doesn't appeal to me that it has mm-hmm. another I in the IPA. <laughs> I guess I'll minutes. drink that one on <laughs> the review. <laughs> I don't know if it's taking that. Uh, syncopation, a double dry hopped IPA. And you know that it named syncop- what the word syncopation is? Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I mean, I, I learned this from George Porter, and, and we'll, we'll highlight George Porter one day because I did that interview with him a few years back. But he talked about that's like the offbeat or whatever, and then the meters the New Orleans band really mastered syncopation and brought that into funk and oh really the Godfathers of Funk and um, tell you what I'm going to play the clip right now it's George Porter talking about what syncopation is the, the, our use of syncopation uh, uh, of allowing space between the notes um, I believe separates what we play here in New Orleans versus what gets played everywhere else. Um, so I believe that's, you know, if that's what, if that's the thing that makes it, makes it identified as funk, then that's, that's what it'd be. I would have to say syncopation is the word that's missing from the concept of funk. <laughs> that was, that's really interesting. I never, I never knew that. So, see, I'm learning things on the show. <laughs> yeah, and I'm beating the counter right next to the microphone, so <laughs> yeah. I don't know much. But anyway, so we were talking about the beers they have. They have a Green Wave, which is a Crystal Wisen. Crystal Wisen, I don't know what kind of beer that is. A Green Wave, obviously, that's in honor of Tulane. Yeah. Uh, they have Hapatulis IPA, which I know is a popular one. I, I have tried the Hapatulis, and I do like that one. Yeah. That one gets the seal of approval. And, of course, the Irish Channel Stout. And they have many other seasonal ones. But if you want to try any of their beers, they have brewery tours. They have a, a cafe. They have, you, know, you can go there and drink. And uh, what I was just reading on their website was... They give brewery tour every Friday at 2 o'clock, and in their tap room, they have 23 different beers. So they have all their seasonal beers, which go to their website and check it out. The website's on the bottom of the screen right now. I hope If I remember to put that there, <laughs> <laughs> it will be on the bottom of the screen right now. So uh, they also have special things go there. I did not know this, but they have an open mic comedy night. Oh, really? Yeah, uh, open mic comedy. Uh, I think it's on Sunday nights, maybe. I'm not totally sure, but check out their website. They have another thing, a musical bingo called Singo. I don't know how that works, but it sounds interesting. And they have live music, and they do yoga classes, yoga and beer. Yoga and beer, so you can work off what you're drinking. Yeah, I've never done yoga. I don't bend that way, but (laughs) (laughs) I'll go watch. So back to this beer. Um, How... How would you rate it out of, let's say, 1 out of 10? How would you rate it? Well, you see, I'm not going to say anything bad about the beers, but I really do like this. Oh, well, let's that's that's why I'm not going to drink any IPAs on this show, because I don't want to say anything <laughs> bad about the beers. Um, or maybe let's here, let's put in three categories. It's a mood. It's a, it, it has to be in the mood, because sometimes I'm in the mood for a stout. Yeah. You know, but I can drink a stout almost any time. But if it's a nice, sunny day, I'm cutting the grass, and I'm coming inside, and I want, you know, something to refresh that's me. That's a beach beer. Yeah, yeah, it's a beach beer. It's hot outside, and you need, you know, 
I don't want water. Water's not going to give me a buzz. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I drank the 7th uh, Seventh Street Wheat Lemon Basil. I'm glad I bought a six-pack of it. Yeah, so that's, so you're saying this is more of like a summer heat, like going to Jazz yeah. Fest, yeah. cutting the grass, or just walking to your car. <laughs> yeah, I might not get this one in a bar. You know, this is one to keep at yeah. the house, keep in a nice chest. Probably not in a bar. It's a good party beer, too. Like, if someone comes over and they want a beer, and they're like, I don't like beers, it's like, here. Because the aftertaste, man, I love that yeah, aftertaste. I think it's the basil. It's the basil kind of sits in your mouth a little bit. Yeah. But I've got the interesting stout, which I love this beer. I, I've i been drinking coffee nonstop every day, and this is like coffee plus. <laughs> and, and it's good. I mean, mostly stouts I drink are imported, but you know, I'm, I like supporting local breweries, and that's a good stout. So yeah, you get you get the coffee and the chocolate, and it's very. I don't usually trust chocolate beers because I've I've been burned before. Sure, but this one, first time trying it, it is really good. One complaint, guys, over there at, at the brewery is I need these in bottles. <laughs> Yes. I'm just, I'm just going to say it because uh, in preparing for this show, I, w- I went to Rouse's and I wanted to get a variety of their beers. And Rouse's uh-huh. sells them by the, sells beers by the bottle where you can get a whole bunch of variety of local beers. But they don't do that with cans. They're not splitting the cans at Rouse's. So I guess you guys win because I had to buy two packs, a four pack of this and a six <laughs> six pack of this. So I guess you guys win. The marketing department. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, you know, if you did the bottles, we would have had probably all of them lined up right here and tried them. Yeah, so. and we could have done cool slow pours. Yes, you'll see. Next show, we're going to get one in a bottle, and I'm going to do a slow motion pour in a frosty glass. You know, <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't work, but it can. No, it does not. But y'all can make up for this by installing a tap right here, and we'll drink your beer every show. Yes, definitely. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> Hashtag oh. NOPC. <laughs> news <laughs> okay so <laughs> all right do that again but no we'll use that one <laughs> <laughs> news. Oh okay. my God. so in news <laughs> drink <laughs> so in news uh the only item we really want to talk about was it's a pretty big item is that french quarter fest is moving it's moving to the week right before Jazz Fest, which, you know, is really going to... It's This city's going to be chaos for three weeks, you know, with, with those two festivals. So uh, so Jazz Fest is April 23rd through May 3rd next year. So uh, I guess it's like the 17th or around that weekend. French Quarter Fest is moving. Is, is moving. French Quarter Fest has been around for 35 years, and it's grown. It's getting bigger. It takes up the year. whole downtown city. Yeah, it's just it's just crazy French Quarter Fest, and uh, you can't blame people for going there because French Quarter Fest is still free. Yeah, French Quarter Fest is the f- biggest free festival, free music festival in the world. So yeah, and it's awesome because what I love about festivals, Jazz Fest and French Quarter Fest and Voodoo Fest, is that you know you listen to a band, they might not play the music you like, you just go walk to the next band. Yeah, there's just stages, you know, upon stages, and the thing I like about the French Quarter Fest over other ones is. Because they don't charge for you to get in, they don't have the budget of Jazz Fest. They're not bringing in the Rolling Stones. Uh, <laughs> well, Jazz Fe- Fest isn't doing that either. Or Fleetwood Mac. Fleetwood <laughs> Mac. Uh, so. so I won't see Pitbull at French Quarter Fest. No, you won't see Pitbull at French Quarter Fest because they, they get a lot of local artists. Yeah. And because it just doesn't, they don't have the money to pay for those big acts, but that's what's great about it. You get to see all these local artists that we talk about and ones I've never heard of, and I'll stop in and see them. And then all the bars in the French Quarter are going to have live music also, so the ones that didn't get hired by French Quarter Festival are playing in the bars. Just so much music anywhere, and you head over to Frenchman after, or, you know, just. Yeah. This, I think more than Jazz Fest, the, the city just comes alive with French Quarter Festival. Just the music and mm. the food and. And, and, and all the locals are out there. Well, also, too, like, festivals do charge more money for food because yeah. you can't leave to go get food. So, like, you can go and sit, go get beignets. You can go get a po' boy. You, you can go get all kinds of stuff. <laughs> He's changing to the stout. <laughs> you know, here, if you want to pour me another one of those. Kind yeah, of. Sure. But, but that's about- what I really like about 
French Quarter Fest is you can stay there as long as you want, and you're going to get your money's worth because it's free. And it's in the French Quarter. Yeah. So that way, when French Quarter Festival ends, the party doesn't end. Yeah, you just go straight yeah. to the bar you wanted to go to. Or, or you can go get you know, food at a restaurant. You don't have to buy it at the vendors on the street. You can go into one of the restaurants. Though, or, or what I do is, you know, instead of buying beer and all at, at the vendors, I go into Rouse's. And just bring an ice chest because yeah. they don't care because yeah. they're not selling beer. That's what I'm saying. Well, they sell beer there, but it, you know, but I'm a local and I'm going to cheat and I'm going <laughs> to sneak beer into chest. Us. And these uh, are the yeah. beers you can buy at yeah. Rouse's <laughs> and enjoy some music. Because all too often the official beer of these festivals is Miller. Oh, yeah. And so I'm not going to go pay 12 bucks for a Miller Lite or 7 bucks. I'm not buying a Miller Lite. I'll drink water before <laughs> I drink a Miller Lite. I, I just choose not to get drunk. Yes. You know, if Miller Lite was the only beer in the world, then I'm not an alcoholic anymore. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not an alcoholic. <laughs> so, with that said. Yes. Let's... I might laugh more as this, <laughs> depending on how many takes we have. So, but with French Quarter Festival moving, that's going to leave a void that we can have. Oh, why is it moving? I guess that's what, you know, a good journalist would tell you. Yeah. <laughs> just, you know, they just decide to move. No, they, they plan on going back to their regular weekend earlier in the month. But the reason why they're moving is because the NCAA Women's Final Four is going to be hosted in the arena, in the Smoothie King Arena. Mm. So, so they had to move it to, to make way for that because, you know, all the traffic for the Women's Final Four. We're back. <laughs> We forgot to mention that there are other festivals that were scheduled for that weekend, and yeah. French Quarter Festival is going to be stepping all over and, and destroying, because French Quarter Festival just takes over everything, and I don't know, these other festivals may just have to cancel, or, or, or move, to, move yeah. to that other weekend where French Quarter Festival was. And the two festivals are the Red Cup Festival in Armstrong Park. Which might get in the way. Yeah, I think, yes. <laughs> Armstrong Park, so they, there's no way they're going to have that festival there. I don't know if it's a free festival. I looked a little bit at it. Uh, yeah, hold on, I... Did pull up who played there last year. Oh. It seems like a really good time. I think it's the Red Cups because the Solo Cups. Yes, and it's not a country festival, as you would think, with Red Solo Cup. Yeah, that song, but uh, who played there? Oh, wait, that's 420. Okay, that was last year. They had Beat King, Bun B was the headliner, uh, Tokyo Vanity, Reup, Reedy. Static Jetson and, and many other ones and I don't know any of these acts but I I don't mind going to see acts I've never seen before. Yeah, if so, it's a uh, free show. I I can bring a red cup. Yeah, I'll see if I can, <laughs> I'll, maybe I'll edit one of these artists into the yes. podcast right here. So, so if you don't like the music that's playing at French Quarter Fest, you can hit French Quarter Fest in the morning, Red Cup Festival at night. But we'll yeah. see when they're when they are because bring your red cup. To French Quarter Festival because it's free. They, they're not going to tell you anything about bringing a red cup in. Yeah, you know, let's double turn, dip. Come on, red cup people. Let's turn French Quarter into the red cup festival. Red cup festival. I oh, like yeah. it. Hashtag yeah. red cup festival takeover. But also there's another <laughs> festival going on that weekend that may have to move. You know, because this is a huge festival. Yeah. Everybody in town talks about this festival. I mean, I, you know, I, I go all the time. It's the uh, Pandora Puppet Festival at Always Lounge. The Pandora Puppet Festival. Yeah, it's a puppet festival. I, I, I wanted to check that out, and I want to know if they're going to reschedule or you know or what because it just sounds like fun. And uh, what's that on? What's on? Uh, what streets? Uh, uh, always lounge on. It's on. Um, oh, I know uh, how to. Yeah, I know Saint how to Claude. get there. I, I think it's on. I think it's on Saint Claude. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah, and I think maybe they should combine the festivals, the Red Cup Puppet Festival. Yes, put a red. They should team up and take on French Quarter Festival and, and say, "Hey, this was our weekend. That's just wrong." I love French Quarter Fest, but puppets and DJ music. I think I'm, I, I think I know where my money's going. Yes, I, I, <laughs> that would be an interesting mix up. <laughs> At least for the afternoon. At least it doesn't be there for an hour. Somebody match that up for us. <laughs> Okay, well, sorry that the news got so disjointed this time, yeah. but we'll get better. We're, first episode, we're, uh, we're filling out the cracks. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. All right. All right, so we're going to go to what I was really excited to talk about, and that's entertainment. Now, in this segment, mm-hmm. we're going to talk about... What? I just said woohoo, entertainment. Oh, woohoo! I thought you. <laughs> in this segment, we're going to talk about not only what's going on in New Orleans, but what 
has gone on in New Orleans with cool films that have been filmed here and all kinds of stuff. And I watched this movie today, and I'm really excited about it. I turned you on to it, yeah. 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 (laughs) And and, well, this movie came out before you were born, and I remember it because I was really, really young. Uh, It kind of scared me, but the name of the movie was Savage Bees. 1976, shot here in New Orleans, and it's about African killer bees coming over on a ship, and they get out, and it's during Mardi Gras, and these killer bees are attracted to noise and bright colors and things like that, and of course, you know, it's Mardi Gras, yeah. so these killer bees are going to screw up Mardi Gras for everybody, and that's where sort of where the story starts. And I really love these B because it's a B horror movie. For those of you who don't know, that was a B horror movie or like low budget horror movies that have kind of a crazy plot <laughs> and I love this one because it gives you all the New Orleans stereotypes well, like it won awards it won an Emmy you know, it won this, an Emmy? yeah it won, this, this, this television movie won an Emmy and I mean for the time I guess it was really good and people really really liked this there's thing. a lot of character big. development in it <laughs> <laughs> I learned a little too much about the characters well back then it's not like television today y'all where television today they take a lot of pride and it's like as good as movies some of the TV shows that you see on even Netflix and HBO and, and all but back then we had ABC, NBC and CBS that's it so it didn't matter what the hell they put on television we were going to watch it yeah. So they said killer bees. I mean, well, recently they had that one about tarantula quake uh, in New Orleans. You ever heard that one? I've not heard that one yet. Yeah, I think I forget what network that was on, but they made one about an earthquake that releases tarantulas in New Orleans. <laughs> so, but anyway, that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about Savage Bees, the 1976 <laughs> horror movie that was on television. So uh, some of the stars that were in that, see if you remember any of these names. <laughs> don't know any of these names. I don't. I remember, I saw their faces and I starring Ben Johnson, not the track hero. You know? <laughs> uh, Michael Parks. I do know Michael Parks. Michael Parks, uh, I think, passed away recently. Oh, yeah, yeah that name is very he's, familiar. He's in some horror movies and other stuff. You'd recognize Michael Parks. I'll pop his picture up right now. See, maybe Michael you recognize Parks. him, Michael Parks. <laughs> Check him out on IMDb. Uh, Paul Heck, Gretchen Corbett. Uh, Hearst Buchholz, Bruce French, James Best. No, no, I'm looking through these people. Nobody we know. But what I really like about I like movies shot in New Orleans because they do show off parts of New Orleans, show off Mardi Gras, they show off, and I love Mardi Gras. We'll get to that in another show. But they, they they show off New Orleans, and the rest of the country gets to see some things about New Orleans. One thing movies that, that are shot in New Orleans do do I said do do but uh, <laughs> what they do is they sort of misinterpret us you know you have the big easy which maybe we'll do one day with the accents which are outrageous uh, with Dennis Quaid or the geography of New Orleans gets yeah. really messed up in movies uh, maybe we'll do blue chips we won't do blue chips because that was only shot partially in New Orleans mm-hmm. but we're seeing in Algiers right now and Algiers is part of New Orleans it's in the city limits and there's streets coming here but if you watch blue chips which is Nick Nolte and Shaquille O'Neal uh, it's, it's, it, he's coming to recruit Shaquille O'Neal under a different name to play basketball for his college. So they get to New Orleans, they jump on, they cross some railroad tracks, they walk through the swamp, they get on a, a boat, like a, an airboat, to get to, to get to Algiers to come see Shaquille O'Neal play in a gym. Once they get to Algiers and get to the gym, there's a street in front with cars driving around. <laughs> so they, they sort of you know bastardize yeah. our, our geography here in New Orleans uh, in a lot of these movies which I get it I mean I've, I've made some films and things like that so I get it but I just think it's funny and I did laugh in Savage Bees where like I know it's around the Mardi Gras time but like there's Mardi Gras things going on every because it it's over a couple of days. Yeah. And there's like people with Mardi Gras things like dancing every day. Of yeah. The week. Uh, but why, why don't you tell us how they solve the problem of these okay, bees? Yes. So they need to get rid of the bees. And I'm not going to tell you how to solve the problem. I'm going to show you how they solve the problem. But I, it, it was unique. It was interesting. So um, here's how they solve the problem. Well, what are they going to do? Well, you could freeze them. What? Freeze them. He's become immobile at 45 degrees Fahrenheit. If he could drive that car somewhere... He could drive it inside of a refrigeration plant or a packing plant. No, that's no good. It can't already be cold. The bees hate the cold, they fly away. Wherever we go, it'll have to cool down after we get there. Also, it'll have to encompass the entire swarm. I mean, some of those bees are 50, 100 yards from the center of the swarm. Great idea, Rufus. I don't think there's anywhere in the world like I'm describing. Hell, there isn't, Doctor. Aren't you a Saints fan? 
A what? What? <laughs> We'd have to drive the car right through the center of town. I mean, the noise, the motion, the bees would fly away. Now, yeah, you're crazy. You haven't got a prayer. Prayer's exactly what you have got. This is the quietest day of the year in New Orleans. I, I don't understand. It's Ash Wednesday, Doctor. Sheriff, call ahead. Jenny? Yes? So that's how they solve the problem. <laughs> so if, if, I mean, if you keep watching the movie, in the movie, uh, on our, because I'm going to put on our blog page, uh, noahsome.com, all the links and all the pictures and everything that we're talking about. So I'll put the link to the entire movie, which is free on YouTube, to watch. So if you continue watching the movie, yes, she actually drives the bees into the Superdome. Because. Onto the field, you know, because they always have the Saints turf laying on the ground. Yeah, all the <laughs> and then, time. And they let people drive on it with bees. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They're still vacuuming up bees in the Superdome. <laughs> so That's was, why we did so bad. Those couple of years, there was bees there. <laughs> yeah, back in the 70s, you know. We, these damn bees. And then you tried to blow it up in another movie, which we'll talk about another day. They tried to blow up the Superdome. So... Uh, so I love that the the notion because he's like we can't drive bees down a busy street and they're like yeah. no it's Ash Wednesday yes. everyone's yes. hung over and nobody's but, doing well, it. That's right. not really they said no they, they, they said more like people are praying and it's the oh outdoor. everyone's in church yeah, everyone's <laughs> in church and and because the guy said we can't go through middle you know he's like no your prayers are answered <laughs> it's Ash Wednesday. <laughs> And I did find a really fun fact, because once I watched the movie, I researched it. Um, but they actually use live bees. Yeah, they, and, and they said that the bee trainer should have got some awards because there were only a few stings on, on you know, that, that happened, you know, throughout the whole thing. Yeah, they use different scents because bees don't like smoke, and so you can kind of position them with yeah. the smoke and stuff. Wow. But that's pretty cool. Yeah, and um, what, what would you do if killer bees were invading your Mardi Gras? I'd wear a suit, bee suit. I, mean, I ain't missing Mardi Gras. <laughs> You're not missing Mardi Gras. <laughs> I ain't missing Mardi Gras, so, you know. I, I, I'm, I'm buying a beekeeper. That's my costume. <laughs> it's Mardi Gras. Beekeeper, yeah. Everybody, everybody's going to be beekeepers for Mardi Gras. <laughs> if you become a beekeeper. <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody has a beekeeper, I'd fit their rent. Yes, definitely. And now so. we wish there were bees. Because... <laughs> Uh, I hope it's a cold Mardi Gras. Well, if it's a cold Mardi Gras, they can't, you know, the bees won't be active like that. I guess that's a plot hole in the movie is that you it's see? usually cold. You know, and I thought that was science <laughs> fact in that movie. <laughs> <laughs> that and tarantula quake, you know, that's stuff that, you know, they teach in schools now. I don't think there's, I've never been here where there was an earthquake. No, I, don't. <laughs> I, don't I guess it's possible, but <laughs> figure our ground's too mushy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but that. That was a really that was a really funny movie. It's a good New Orleans. If you want to have a New Orleans movie night, go check out Savage Bees. Um, yeah, it's 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 uh, right here. Look, it's I gonna be right there. It's gonna be free. But cheap it's, date. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> and then you can impress her with all your bee facts that you got today. Yes. Bees. We're trying to help people. This is. <laughs> All right, well, um, well, we hope next time we'll talk about more things, talk more about music. Hopefully we'll get it, you know, some of our friends in here to interview some musicians, stuff like that. But um, thank you for, you know, Oh, you forgot about the trivia. Oh, wait, we got to answer the trivia question. we got to oh. answer the trivia. So the trivia question was, what was the last football game in Tulane Stadium? The last football game in Tulane Stadium? Super Bowl Nine. Super Bowl Nine. It was the last game in Tulane Stadium. And then they moved the Super Bowls, too, to the Superdome. So, so. bonus point, who played in Super Bowl Nine? Oh, jeez. i got to remember. It's the um, the Vikings, was it? And the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yes. The Pittsburgh I think Terry Steelers. Bradshaw was a quarterback at the time. Yeah, but well, it was the 70s, so they won four. <laughs> yeah. Louisiana guy. So. Yeah, the Vikings won none. Yes. I remember that miracle. They were right? in four. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they were in four. So uh, so that's, that's our trivia question, and I hope you enjoyed this you know, podcast. So next time, turn into No PC, N-O-P-C, and uh, we'll give you some more about New Orleans. And have some fun. Thanks. <laughs>